If you're just getting into long-range hunting or you're looking to increase your skills as a marksman, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Extreme Outer Limits Podcast. Welcome to the Extreme Outer Limits Podcast. I'm here with my wife, Chris, for this episode or this podcast, mm-hmm. I should say. <laughs> We're used to saying episodes, yeah. so it's just natural. We're going to kind of bring everybody up to speed. I, I know that... Uh, Naturally, a lot of you guys might have seen the television show, Um, but for some of you guys that have not and maybe just catching the podcast for the first time, we kind of want to do a bio. So without further ado, (laughs) let's break down your bio, kid. Oh, boy. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So I'll kind of go through the interview process with you and and ask you questions that I feel would be, uh, you know, maybe interesting or relevant. Um, You're in in a kind of a unique position. You're a female, and, uh, you know, I will say unique in the sense that you are currently, as far as I know, the only female co-host doing long-range hunting. Yeah, that's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) What do you, I mean... I'm a veteran now. Right? You've been (laughs) at this game a while. I have. I think 2010 we started doing this, so we're at seven years now, been shooting long-range, you know, obviously In front of the world. Yeah, in front of the world, Yeah. So if I was a listener, you know, what, take me back. I mean, take me way back, you know, back to, um, you know, quite honestly, we're both on our second marriage. We've have kids that are partially grown up to (laughs) some that are grown up in college and and careers. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So you were a business owner before you had a salon. Yeah, I was a, I, Believe it or not, I, I owned a, a tanning and nail salon in my hometown. I still live in my hometown. Um, and I did it as a hobby. It was just, I was a stay-at-home mom. And once the kids went to school full-time um, and I was no longer horribly involved, you know, with their schooling, it was something that I just always wanted to do. So I bought a tanning salon and nail salon and had employees and whatnot and basically ran my own business. It was fun. It was social for me. It was an outlet outside of the home. Um, And that's what I did for seven years, actually, when I met you. I actually was doing (laughs) that. But even to go back farther, uh, I grew up on a farm. I grew up on a cattle farm. Uh, We raised beef, and we we did all the farming that went along with that, which is your uh, growing of your grain and your hay. and, And we also had... Lots of different uh, fruit and and filbert and walnut and mm-hmm. all different kinds of facets. Anything you it, could do on a the, farm. Yeah, to keep 70s it going. and 80s. So yeah, that dates me a little bit. But I uh, grew up doing that. Uh, learned how to be a hard worker. My dad uh, had three girls, so we all three were tomboys. I guess you would call us. Um, we were the the Hence kids. the reason you wanted to go straight to the tanning and nail salon. I just, just kind of wanted to kind of become a girl that you know, uh, not that I that I wasn't really I'm girly, but them. I'm not. I'm, I'm not, not girly. I'm not girly. Um, I try to be sometimes, but I'm not really girly. But um, you know, I learned my work ethic. I think growing up doing that, showing cows and learning how to take care of uh, animals and stuff. My dad and my uncles and whatnot hunted. Um, us girls went to hunting camp but really didn't do any of the hunting. I think my mom hunted every once in a while, but most of the time we were hanging out with the aunts and the grandparents back at camp. So I grew up around it, but I never was a hunter myself. Right, not fully engaged. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it kind of, uh, I mean, I'm kind of skipping around here, but I just wanted to back up and make no, sure that everybody, good. you know, kind of got a feel for who I was pre-adult, which, sure. you know. Um, makes a difference. Most people think, in my opinion, most people say, well, you must have grown up hunting. You must have mm-hmm. been, you know, a little kid running around with your bow. I wasn't I wasn't that person. Um, I didn't do that. And I have the utmost respect for the women in the field that absolutely did grow up like that because there's a lot of women out there that, that did. Um, I kind of wish that I would have. Uh, I've definitely changed the way my kids have grown up. Mm-hmm. Because now that I'm involved in the outdoor industry and that we are a hunting family, 
we've brought our kids into it. It's interesting to see how our kid dynamic has laid out to kind of cross paths with what you're saying. Seems like our biggest proponent right now of hunting is your daughter, right? So right. my stepdaughter. And um, she's the oldest and the most engaged in it right now. And she came into it the latest, I would say, because oh, yeah. the other kids started as uh, early teens. Like mm-hmm. as soon as they could get their their hunting uh Yeah, and she's starting in done. her early 20s. Yeah, she was like, hey, you guys kind of left me out of this whole thing. <laughs> um, but she... Is Bad on one. my part a little bit. She's such a girly girl. I just assumed you're probably not going to want to go hunting. But, and she's not really a girly girl either. Nah. I mean, yeah. she's she's a lot like me. She's she can be, but she doesn't have to be. Right. But and now her her difficulties with hunting are coming because she's getting ready to start dental school. So she's going to have lots of reasons why she can't go hunting. Mm-hmm. And we're going to probably have to see her take a break for a little bit. Yeah, maybe and, so. But Austin's up and coming. Mm-hmm. Your your youngest. Mm-hmm. He's up and coming, been doing it a couple of years now, and yep. he's excited about hunting season coming up. Yep, yep. That'll be fun for us yep. again. It'll be the third year that he's gotten mm-hmm. to hunt. Mm-hmm. So. All right, well, enough of the kids <laughs> stuff. Enough of the kids stuff. It's easy for you to go there when you're a parent. But it is. Let's get back on you a little bit here. <laughs> All right, so we've got an idea, you know, where you came from, what you were doing, and then all of a sudden just drop me into the mix, right? Wow. Okay, so... Basically, you took me hunting. Actually, we went on uh, several scouting trips Yeah. first off. So we went uh, scouting for bear, if I recall. And I remember the first time you handed me a pair of binoculars. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I called them goggles for the longest time. Yes. I didn't even call them binoculars because I didn't really know what I was supposed to do with them. But I can remember looking through them and thinking what am I supposed to see? Because I didn't, a person that first starts out with binoculars, honestly, probably even a child has no idea what it's supposed to look like on the other side, because I couldn't really see anything but trees. (laughs) And of course we were looking at things that were thousands of yards away, which I knew nothing different. I thought that's what everybody did, but you you were different. You mean they don't? You were different. I found that out later that you were different and what you were teaching me I was learning firsthand for the first time oh it was a thing of beauty for me because (laughs) you you didn't know the difference between anything so if I told you this is what we were going to do you just took it at face value like all right I guess this is what we were doing right I don't know how long it was before I actually asked you what I was supposed to see (laughs) because I think it might have been a couple scouting trips before I actually I think got the nerve up to say am I supposed to be able to see something in these things I remember, I, I remember it still vividly. I said, okay, listen, I don't know exactly what you see, but we're looking for needles and haystacks, right. not elephants and pastures. Right. And then, I was looking for elephants. Yeah, because you just assume, well, it's there's... It's going to be this big animal that's going to pass right. in front of my binos, and I'm going to be like, wow. Yeah. And you would see things, and I would be like, oh, yeah, but I didn't see it. There's the truth I right there. I had no idea. Never going to admit okay. that on the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. Come on now. All Everybody's right, all right. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Okay, so <laughs> so we go scouting. Uh, we were we were dating. All this kind of stuff's going on. We spent a lot of time on the mountain is what we did. <sighs> yeah, right? Yeah. I mean. Not the, ne- not the average dating couple. No. Most people, when they're dating, they're doing different things than what we were doing. I mean, we were doing some of those things, but we were also (laughs) still trying to go do the things that I wanted to do, right? I guess let's be honest with each other. At the time, it was, you were probably just going along because I said I wanted to go. and It was exciting for me. I I love the outdoors. I always have. So being out in the elements didn't bother me. Camping didn't bother me. Being dirty didn't bother me. Um, I don't like bugs very much, but (laughs) (laughs) we got used to it. Yeah. So All right, that's, that's so how it started. That's, that, that's that was how it started, bug. right? Drop me in the mix. We're doing mm-hmm. a little scouting, and you're trying to figure out what the hell am I looking for? Right. Why, why are we here? What are we trying to do? Right. All right. So let's fast forward the clock a little bit. Um, first time that you got on the trigger. Now, admittedly, you, you know, you'd shot some pistols. You shot clay pigeons, yeah. I think. Yeah, uh, obviously, you had a life before me. Before. There's, yeah. there's no doubt about that. But. We go into this um, from scouting into spring bear it was, and um, 
I remember saying, you know, hey, let's take a shot. Let's see how you shoot. Let's kind of go through these functions. Let's roll the bolt. Let's do the safety. Let's do these kind of things. And uh, you really had no idea the distance or anything on the preparation of the shots that I was saying, let's go ahead and do. No, I thought everybody shot that far. I didn't. You still know. remember the to first shot you took? I do, but uh, you know, you know, I think that people don't realize. I had no idea, and uh, there's probably a lot of women, or even boys, that have no idea what an 800 what 800 yards represents. What is that? I mean, is that is is over there? Is that 200 yards? Is it 800 yards? I had no clue. Not a clue. I didn't even understand how you. It was just would a know number. That. Yeah, it was just, just a, a number, number to me. So if you told me to shoot at that rock, we would find it in the binos, and I actually would find it. And uh, I would lay down, which is how you taught me how to shoot. We never put it on sticks. We never, you know, did anything like that. We just started out by laying down, which I thought was nothing abnormal. But most, a lot of people say, wow, you know, I can't shoot prone, or I've never shot prone which we get that at the shooting mm-hmm. schools all the yeah. time. We get 65-year-old men out there saying, I have never shot prone, which is hard for me to believe. But, yeah, I remember the shot. Um, was Nathan with us? No, I don't, no. no, not that one. That was just us. So tell me, you're, you're asking me if I remember the shot. Remind me. I think it was 805 yards or so. It was kind of with uh, – it was before the MOA rifle days, obviously. It my, so It was my 300 Ultra McMillan rifle, right? <sighs> Oh, I don't. Uh, I'm not even so set on that was the oh, case. Oh, it might have been one of your. I think it was just rifles. a gun that I had gunsmithed mm-hmm. together back mm-hmm. then. That was probably 18 pounds. Yeah, I don't think oh, I could carry. Of it. course, I mean back then to get a <laughs> long range rifle that was under 16 pounds, that was almost unheard of. Yeah. Now there definitely was a constant. Uh, we were definitely on Burger bullets and we were definitely on Night Force scopes, but we weeded through a lot of different rifle combinations of, you know, this barrel, that barrel, whatever. Anyway, I'm getting into technical mm-hmm. stuff, but we had to kind of weed our way th- into success on that ultimately end up what we're doing. But, uh, yeah, no, I remember it was, it was about 805 yards and I remember you taking the shot and actually connecting mm-hmm. and, and you really had no idea what, what you'd done. even done. No, you just, no. oh, that's supposed to happen, right? That's what I'm supposed How to do. How did you I, feel about that? I, <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of excited, right? Because I think guys naturally get in their own heads about, even if it's as simple as laying a group down at a hundred yards, you get in your head about it. And, um, so your performance might slip based on, you know, wherever your emotions are in that deal. So to see you lay down and smack one out at just over 800 yards and connect on the first shot, it, it showed me, okay, well, she's got some skill. Or, or at least what I can mold into skill. <laughs> skill might have just been, yeah, <laughs> we don't know yet. Well, you didn't let the emotion get in the way of the game. You right. just had a job to do, went through uh, the steps, and, and got the job done. So that mm-hmm. was pretty cool. So anyway, continue on, though. So here we are, right? I was are, just right? curious because I know how competitive you are. So I was just <laughs> wondering if it actually kind of pissed you off. So that's why I was wanting to say, how did you feel when I made that shot? Well, naturally, like any good <laughs> marriage, we're going to – we're going to look one another <laughs> eye to eye and we're going to have an agreement. And then when we don't yeah. look and you walk your way, you're going to know what you know yeah. and I'm going to know what I know. Mm-hmm. And so I'm always going to say I've got her by one mm-hmm. and you're mm-hmm. always going to say I've got him by one. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. That's okay. all right. That's good, healthy competition to yeah. <laughs> do yeah. a little better. Anyway, okay. no, I, I was pumped. I was like, all right, you can shoot. Let's do this. <laughs> so let's see where it takes you. So where did it take you? Well, it took me to hunts, on hunts with you, Mm -hmm. where you were the only one with tag. Okay, well, (laughs) let's, now's the time, right? This is the the uh, uncensored version. Why were you going? I mean, I know why you're going. Why why don't you tell everybody else? So you're, you you know, your wife, you're a mother, you're all these things, and and you're a business owner at this point. Why were you going hunting? I enjoyed it. And? I wanted to be with you. Yeah wanted to hang out with you you were pretty cool <laughs> oh <then>. whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> no I did I I you know a lot of wives I always knew we had groups of girls that I used to run around with and when their husbands were gone hunting that's when you know we had like little get-togethers and stuff so there was a lot of husbands um that would hunt and they never ever dreamed of taking their wives and the fact that you wanted me to go with you was pretty exciting for me. <laughs> it's like my girlfriends never get to do this. I'm going to try it, and I loved it. I, I, rem- I remember you saying, 
that you'd rather be involved mm-hmm. and and have a unique scenario in your relationship mm-hmm. or whatever. Now we both know that that comes with this up and down, right? Like there's right. days you just soon shoot me in the face and to look at me. Well, and there's hugs but, that I tell you go on by yourself and I, I'll hang yeah. back. But there's a lot, most of the time, I mean, that's where I wanted to be. You solidified from early on that I'm going to be a part of this because mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit at home being a, a hunting yeah. widow, Exa- so to speak, I, right? I, I think I actually used that word. Yeah, yeah I, I do remember so. that because I was... I was pretty adamant that I was not going to be in a relationship where my significant other was gone six months out of the year. And we all know that that's about what we're gone, <laughs> but, yeah. um, a- and just be hanging out, waiting for him to get back. That's, that was, that was not something I was really excited to do. I know a lot of wives do that. Um, people that are married to military, that's something they just take as part of the, part, of, part of the package, part of the package. But, um, for me, I was saying to myself, I could do this. It, it would be different if I was absolutely not interested. Then, then I would have to take that back seat and I would have to stay home and whatever else. But I was intrigued. I was excited about it. I enjoyed being out there. Um, I considered myself tough enough, mm-hmm. I should say. Tough enough. Stubborn um, is what I call yeah, it. Yeah, that could be. Stupid. I think it's purely stubborn. I mean, you're 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 moderately tough, but you're so damn stubborn that moderately I think that carried tough, you. Huh? Well, hmm. let's just give an example. So now we've kind of got through the the scouting to the hunting, the and you mentioned earlier. Well, you'd go when you didn't even have a tag. Mm-hmm. So I remember uh, a certain hunt that we went on uh, for a bear in the fall, hundred degrees. And you went out with nothing more than a pair of Romeos and hiked around till your feet burned. You didn't tell me not to. You must have been looking at me like, is she going to wear those? But you definitely never said it. I think that was still early on when you I feel like everything. I was just excited that I owned a pair of Romeos already. So <laughs> <laughs> You always whine that you, your boots make your feet claustrophobic. Now I whine. Okay. <laughs> so it's like if you don't have to wear hunting boots that you've got to lace tight to yeah. your feet. That's the Romeos. the Romeos. Those are thing. like slippers to me. Yeah. And and some people probably have no idea what those are, but if you're from the Northwest, you know what they are. But they're also... Uh, like a slip-on work boot. They don't Georgia lace. Georgia boots is what yeah. they call them. I don't even know why. And so your feet can do this trick in them, mm-hmm. which they did. Oh, until yeah. Until your feet were completely burned. Because we had to go down hills that I did not understand how we were going to get back up when we were heading down them, but I followed you. Well, let's I, talk- I was just, I was not that smart at the time, and I actually followed you. And then we had to, I mean, we seriously climbed through blackberry bushes, like through them. And I think I was in a short sleep shirt, Welcome to Western too. Oregon, right? Yeah. Nowadays, I'm a little smarter. I go around them. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about the mountains. Let's talk about the hiking, right? Because... One of the funny stories you tell me, and you didn't tell me this for years after. So this, this story is not that old, even as uh, of today. Yeah. I remember you telling me, let, let's just say for conversation four years ago, you said, you know, when we first started this and you used to say to me that we're going to go over there oh, and yeah. I would point and that over there would be however far it was. <laughs> you, you tell us, you tell the story, but it, it's funny well, your perception of that deal. And it was absolutely my perception. Um, when you would say well, we have to just get on the other side of that ridge. It was one of those things where I heard what you said, but I was thinking to myself, there's absolutely no way that we can do that. How are we going to do that? And I would actually, I think I did ask you at some point, how? (laughs) And you were like, walk? I was like thinking that's going to take us three days. I mean, in my mind, there was just no feasible way to get over there on our feet. It was like, do we have an ATV or something, a horseback? And you would tell me, no, it's going to take us approximately, you know, 15 minutes. And I'd say, there's no way he's lying to me just to get me to follow him. <laughs> and I would follow him. And it would take us about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And so, and, and it's, again, it's one of those things that you just, you think there's no way... I mean, look at, stand at the bottom of a ridge. Somebody that's from an area that's just completely flat mm. would would understand what I was feeling. They would look at you like, I'm going to go up that or I'm going to go down that. There's no way. I mean, and as the years went on, there was things that I experienced that I thought, how did I not die? <laughs> because I really, you know, there was times where I was just following. I, I, I was just like a child a following. But we would be going, I mean, it'd be pouring down rain. 
sticker bush is wrapping around your legs as you're sliding down this shale face that has water running down it. And the, the bottom is a long ways down there. Yeah. So you may look at it and be like, oh, she's overreacting. Today, it doesn't bother me. But when we first started doing this, there was days when I got to the bottom or the top of the hill and was like, I don't know if I should do this again. You know, it's funny to hear you, and, I, and I'm, I'll steer us back on track here in a minute, but it's funny how every once in a while I field emails. You don't see them very much because we keep the hate emails away from you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, obviously I see them. Mm-hmm. And you would be amazed at how many people – uh, that are obviously anti whatever mm-hmm. we do for whatever reason have really no clue at all mm-hmm. what we're doing. I, Cause you hear uh, long range hunting, you know, not long range is not hunting. We'll just keep it at that. It's just shooting. It's just target practice. And it's like, man, you have never been to the Western States or you probably would not be open in your <laughs> mouth right with now. This. <laughs> yeah. Because listening to you tell this, it's not me, right? Like sometimes I say it in a way that I feel like I got to convince this person that, you know, maybe you should give us a chance and maybe you should have a, a, an open mind that maybe you just aren't seeing it exactly. But to listen to you say it, it's not biased for me. I'm just listening to you tell the story and it solidifies that honestly, these people have no clue what they're talking mm-hmm. about. I mean, just like you're saying, going down these hills, how far is it? You know, this country can be big and we go into some big, big stuff. Mm -hmm. And then here I am dragging you into all of it. Well, and we, and we also can look at things where somebody would not even be looking in those areas at all. And we will look there now, you know, whereas before I thought to myself, you know, I needed to find something that was right over there. Mm -hmm. But no, in fact, we can, we can take our binos and, and look at things that people never even imagined we should be looking at, which is how I learned. So that's how I, that's what I remember. Remember when we made our pilot show, it was Spring Bear, Oregon. Mm. So Mm. I don't know if we had to timeline this, we could kind of connect it back into, into your little bio here is I believe that would have only been, was that your second or third year of, of actually getting out scouting and hunting with me? When we actually did. When we filmed the pilot for Extreme Outer Limits. We were filming. Was that maybe it third you of you really kind of getting involved? Maybe no, probably two. Okay. No, because I think we filmed most of that. We we didn't submit it until eleven, but I think we filmed most of it in ten. In ten. And we got yeah, yeah so a couple years in. Yeah. I remember saying to the camera at that point, I said, um, you know, see where that bear is, and then see where we came from, because you mm-hmm. could see a landing that we had our vehicle mm-hmm. parked on. And when you think about that overall distance, it was some ridiculous number. It was almost like, a, you know, three quarters of a mile or something each way. Mm-hmm. Well, know. if you're talking about where I shot the my spring bear, yeah. I took pictures of that because I just could not believe That was that. insanity. Yeah. Yeah. I took <laughs> pictures from, from the bear, actually, to the truck Yeah, that I could see on a landing that was... Did you feel like you weren't hunting? You were just target shooting? Don't no. Hell I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> Don't, I don't was answer, hunting. I'm just kidding. I mean, we found that bear <laughs> in our binos, and we'd been looking all day, and I found a bear, and I just laid down, and we found a good place to shoot from. Got and the work done. I'm just joking about the other people, but I anyway. Uh, all right, all right. So, okay. Can't please everybody. No. So let's connect on something real quick. So, you know, I never really thought about it till here we are, podcast, loose, loose talk, have you ever thought about the fact that you're the only female that we know of in the long range game? Never even crossed my mind, no. No, because there's a lot of talented women out there that hunt. And oh, and no doubt, and right? We're not comparing yeah. by any means. There's all kinds of but talented I, no, people No, I've everywhere. never really thought of the fact that I'm the only one that shoots long range, no. I wonder why that is. I don't know. I don't they should just, come out. Just dawned on me. Just dawned <laughs> on me that that's really the case. I mean, now granted, uh, you know... Uh, part of our team, the wives and things like that, you know, we've been kind of teaching and nurturing anywhere we can, but the fact that on television Mm -hmm. doing the TV game and nobody else doing what you're doing, that's kind of interesting. So, well, uh, you know, it's kind of touched on a little bit of where you come from and what you're doing and a little bit of how you got here, but where where do you see yourself going? I mean, I know we get wrapped up in day-to-day stuff between, you know, my vision and your vision might be very different, right? Because I'm worrying about always the next hunt and the next animal and the next cool gun and the next cool scope or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you balance a different set of emotions. You know, you've got office stuff, you've got children, 
you're kind of the glue that's still got to hold the family together between, you know, hey, we've got to go on this trip, that trip, this family function, whatever. But now your life is pretty much evolved into a career of hunting. Where are you going? What are you going to do? What, what do you <laughs> see in the future? I don't know. You know, um, I, I always wanted to hunt a moose, and we did that last year. That was pretty exciting. Um, I don't know where I see myself going. I'm just, I'm just living the dream. <laughs> I'm honestly just in it, you know, with you. Do There's not a lot of uh, thought that I put into what I want to do for myself. I generally am always thinking about what we should do for mm. our, um, for our, obviously our television series, as well as our, our companies and our family and our, you know, our companies have taken on a whole new, um, You're kind know, of a beast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it anymore. And so we're just, and we're between just between that and, and, and trying to keep the family, you know, together, we've got a lot of things going on between the two of us with five kids. Um, we've got, you know, a lot of, a lot of things going on at all times. So as long as I can keep us somewhat grounded at some times and keep us organized yeah. on our hunting schedule and whatnot, uh, trade shows, whatever we're doing at the moment. Um, you know what's funny about this? Let me cut in for a second. So I live on a Google calendar on my phone. Mm -hmm. And admittedly, you populate you know, 98% of the stuff that's on there. Right. But what has been funny, just on a total personal note lately, is about the last two years, you handle, like you said, trade shows, hunts, you know, travel days in and out, mm -hmm. all this other stuff. Heck, you even handle the dates a lot of for our own camp, right? Mm -hmm. The Star Valley camp. But now I've found that I'm the one that plans our vacations. Because <laughs> I don't have time to, nor do I even think about You're just ready to melt down at night. Yeah. And at night when it's time when everybody else would, you know, go to bed and mm -hmm. you maybe prop a couple pillows up and you're going to watch TV, mm -hmm. I'll get on a tablet and I'll be like, okay, we got to go on a, on a retreat. We got to... We got to vacate from all of us, right? Like we just went on the jet boat tour there in mm -hmm. Southern Oregon and we went up the coastline. And the funny thing is I planned all that. And it was so interesting. This is really the first year that you actually were just okay with it. I don't think you oh, even man. hardly asked me. I was excited. Where are we going? That what are we doing? You just said, I'm there. Let me it. know. I, yeah. Tell me what day I'm leaving and what I need to pack. Yeah. Just what do I need to put it in the suitcase? Nice. It was nice. I do, I do a lot of planning, a lot of scheduling for us and our employees. And so um, it gets to a point sometimes where it's like, I don't even want to make another flight arrangement. I don't want to make another, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I appreciate that very much. It was, it was nice to have that. And I'm just going to expect that now. So right. you might've dug yourself. So a if the vacation sucks, it's on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go ahead and handle that. It'd probably be hard to <laughs> suck as long as it's not any feel of work. I think I'm go. okay. Yeah. All right. So before we wrap it up, you know, we've got a, a good year coming this year. Um, is there anything in particular you're looking at, you know, that you're excited about this year? And, uh, I'll let you answer that. And then I want to give you a little hint. I know we've got a big one coming next year. Oh yeah. But yeah. we don't want to spoil that. What about this year? What about this year? I would probably say the New Mexico hunt that we're doing, um, together, uh, came about in a, in a strange, you know, roundabout way, uh, at a trade show this year, mm -hmm. we actually met a gentleman, uh, at the Portland Trade Show, and um, Jeff Lester yep. with Hunt Hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was getting you interested in elk hunt, which yep. has kind of been your thing this year that you wanted to do. But I go on um, kicks. Yeah, you just go on kicks. Change. Yeah, it used to be mule deer. To, you know, I don't know if it'll ever be bear, but you never know. They, sure, sure. they seem to kick your butt, so we may not go there. <laughs> but Ouch, um, that hurts. <laughs> they kick both of our butts. Damn. Anyways, it was... It was really all about you. The hunt was all about you. I was excited that you were going on this hunt. I went and bought hats from the guy. You know, <laughs> I really liked their hats. And um, you kept going back over there, going back over there, going back over there. And I don't think that we even got a hold of that tag for – I think that we were at a different show, and you said, what if – well, we keep building on the relationships, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, when you kind of connect up with some good people that uh, – it naturally just comes together, mm -hmm. I guess would be the way to speak, right? If if you're gonna if you're gonna build on that relationship, it comes easy, mm -hmm. and that's how we got yeah. to where you're gonna. So go you got a tag. Yeah, I got a tag. And I usually, you know, that's that's fine. You get a tag. You're just gonna come along. And I was just gonna come along. Um, 
because that's exciting for me too. I, I live through you when you get excited about something and, and you know, I'm right behind you. I'm right beside you. However, however mm-hmm. you want to look at it. So when the second tag came available, I was pretty excited. I don't know if you could tell how excited I was, but I was like, you'd really buy that for me? <laughs> so what so. we're talking about, just to be clear, is uh, Gila. Yeah. Gila, New Mexico, Trophy Elk. It yeah. should be an excellent hunt. So. Yeah, which, and I haven't hunted a lot of elk in my hunting career, so it even, makes it even more exciting for me because, you know, it's just I'm going somewhere completely different. Um, I Have I hunted in New Mexico? Yeah. Barberry, but we didn't, yeah. We did mule deer before as well. But That's right. I, I had done some other hunts, mm-hmm. um, but this is your time, New Mexico, is, uh, you for know, your first time for right. New Mexico. And with it being where it's at, yeah. and uh, I believe that the gentleman that we're going with is, you know, top notch. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great hunt. Yep. I, I'm. That's probably my most exciting thing I'm looking forward to in the this fall. So one last little teaser before we wrap this thing up. 2018 is uh, something we've kind of got that's that's really exciting. Um, you always enjoy the horse riding, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're looking forward to going up with Arctic Red for the mm-hmm. sheep, adult sheep, moose, and mountain caribou combo. Mm-hmm. So I know that's been pretty exciting for you and uh, kind of came about again without your knowing, mm-hmm. really. So yeah, that one's kind of cool. Yeah, you, you kind of pulled that one out of your pocket <laughs> while I was working the Portland show and you were working the Utah show. Which Can't let me go anywhere without uh, you. Yeah, I definitely don't let you go to the auctions. <laughs> <laughs> so right. that's exciting, though. I mean, that will, yeah. that will definitely be one to I mean, remember. we've got, you know, for all you guys at home, we've got a, obviously a full roster mm-hmm. of hunts, but just wanted to pick your brain a little bit about what's kind of got you excited, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We get drowned in the, in the work and, and you know, got to healthy maintain the family the best we can so but, but hunting's still fun right we want to keep it fun yeah i think that when that if that ever goes away which it shouldn't but if it did i think you would you know we'd hang our hat absolutely but uh it's still exciting we still enjoy it to the fullest and we get excited when it's time to go hunting and uh as long as we're still feeling all those emotions i think that we're still doing you know what what is the saying that you always say about if you can make uh, any hobby. There's an old saying that goes, if you try hard, try enough, hard enough, you can make any hobby a job. And that's true. That's you, absolutely you've gotta true. You've got to be very us. careful with how you balance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thanks for being in the hot seat. I know it's not <laughs> too bad with me hammering you, but uh, I think this podcast be will be an exciting uh, venture. We're in the early episodes of it, and we're going to get some more good information out there, uh, you know, from Kelly and get his involvement um and get some information out there for me and then we're going to start moving on to uh hunts and gear uh related type stuff and hopefully you kill some good stuff and we'll drive you back out and get you on the hot seat again sounds good i'm ready all right